Hello students, how are you? In the previous video, I told you about uh, or I started telling you about the soil. Okay. And then we were talking about how the soil is formed, the various factors that lead to the formation of the soil. I hope you understood it. There were very various factors like uh, the sun's radiations, uh, temperature that f affect the temperature. Because of that, the continuous expansion and the contraction of the rocks which leads to develop cracks in them. And due to these cracks formation, what happens? The, soil, uh, the rocks gets weathered or you can say breaks into smaller pieces. Okay, then another factor was uh, wind and another factor like water. So these were quite a few factors which help in the weathering of rocks or we can say the formation of soil. I told you it is a long process, it takes a long period of time. Okay, then I told you that soil, it is a mixture of various substance. It contains following one that is small pieces of rocks, second bits of decayed living organisms called humus, third microscopic organisms fourth minerals and nutrients clear now this pie chart shows the composition of soil you can see out of 100% 25% is air water is 25% and mineral particles are 45% okay rest the 5% is organic matter in that 5% organic matter humus is 80% okay organisms 10% and 10% is covered by roots so this is the composition of soil I hope uh, the diagram is clear it is out of 100% what are the part composition of soil and in organic matter that is only 5% in that how much humus roots organisms are present okay Now, next is factors that decide the type of soil. Okay, you have studies various uh, kind of soil in the lower in the junior classes like uh, sandy soil, clay soil, silt soil, etc. Now, what are the factors that decide the type of the soil, whether which type of soil it is? So let's start. First, the amount of humus present in the soil. The more the humus, the more porous and deep the soil is. Okay, the amount of humus present in the soil. Now more humus will be, so the more porous. Porous means more pores will be there, and because of containing more pores, it can hold more amount of air as well as can hold water. So that's why the soil rich in humus. It is said to be very good for agriculture. Okay, why? Because it is very porous, and due to uh, porous nature it can hold air and well as water okay second the number of microscopic organisms in the soil they help in keeping it fertile there are certain bacteria okay and uh, some also f some associations between organisms which helps in thus keeping soil fertile by doing the nitrogen fixation as you know that nitrogen is available in the atmosphere but it cannot be directly consumed by the plants so to consume that nitrogen first of all that nitrogen is fixed okay in the form of useful compounds like ammonia and then it is uptaken by plants third the parent rocks they decide the minerals that are present in the soil so the parent rocks will decide whether the what kind of minerals are present in the soil so these are the factors that decide type of the soil and also decides which kind of plant will grow in that soil clear all these factors also decide which kind of plants will grow in that soil. Topsoil, the upper layer of soil which contains all living organisms and humus is called topsoil. The quality of topsoil in a region decides the biodiversity of that place. Now there are, is a new term that is biodiversity. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity means different kind of life forms in a place. Okay. If we talk about earth, then different kind of life forms on earth. If we talk about Asia, then different types of life forms in Asia. So it depends on place to place. What are the different kinds of life forms in different places? That is the biodiversity. Bio means living 
and diversity means diversification okay various forms so various forms of living species or living organisms clear so i hope that factors that decide the type of soil is clear the amount of humus present in the soil number of microscopic organisms in the soil and the parent rocks these are the factors that decide type of the soil next topic is soil pollution let's start soil pollution we know that soil contains different types of substances all of them are responsible for the sustenance of biodiversity when the useful components get removed from the soil it loses its fertility and leads to a decrease in the microscopic life in it this phenomena is called soil pollution okay so what is soil pollution like air pollution water pollution there is soil pollution when harmful substance get mixed in the water it is known as water pollution when harmful substance get mixed in the air it is called air pollution and similarly when the harmful substance are mixed in soil it is called soil pollution okay so the soil we contains different types of substance and all of them are responsible for sustenance of biodiversity when useful components get removed it loses its fertility and leads to decrease in the microscopic life in it and this phenomena is called soil pollution or we can say opposite also it is saying when the useful components get removed we can say when the harmful substance get added okay what can be those harmful substances many like chemical fertilizers in industrial waste etc there are many of the harmful substances that can lead to soil pollution okay next is the causes of soil pollution long usage of fertilizers and pesticides leads to the killing of microorganisms present in it without these organisms the soil would not get recycled and replenished earthworms get killed because of the pesticides they are the ones that lead to the formation of humus in the soil okay so the first cause of the soil pollution is usage of fertilizers and pesticides see fertilizers and pesticides pests are used pesticides are used to kill various pests that are present in the field crop fields okay and fertilizers they are used to enhance the fertility of the soil but as we know that these are the chemical substance so pesticides along with killing the pest also kills some useful microorganism in the soil now that is very harmful and similarly this fertilizers also they do enrich the quality of soil they do enrich the fertility but what do they do they also kill some useful microorganism in it okay so that natural touch of the soil loses because of using fertilizers and pesticides okay so after the microorganisms get killed without these organisms the soil would not get recycled and replenished earthworms get killed because of the pesticides they are the ones that lead to the formation of humus in the soil you know that earthworm is commonly known as farmer's friend why because it leads to the formation of the humus okay and uses and due to use of pesticides it gets killed so the formation of humus is also affected clear second one flowing water and winds can carry away the soil particle and often lead to exposure of rocks see as i told you earlier that the only the top soil is responsible for all that type of biodiversity once it gets flown away or it gets blown away in the wind then what happens the biodiversity there pretty much ends or not ends then there is a significant decrease in the biodiversity okay of the plants also why because the plants are present on the top soil and if it gets flown away then the sustenance of the plant is very difficult and it also leads to the exposure of the rocks okay third deforestation can also lead to soil pollution as the uprooting of trees exposes the soil to rains and winds now this is also important important cause of uh, soil pollution that deforestation cutting down of trees is also lead to soil pollution how you know that the roots of the trees they tightly hold the soil particles and because of that they do not allow the soil particles to move away in the heavy winds or with the water flow but if you cut the trees if you are doing lot of deforestation then what happens that the tree that due to the uprooting of trees it exposes the soil to rains and winds and sometimes when heavy winds and rains occur then what happens 
the top layer of the soil is flown away with the wind or blow or it is flown away with the wind or water okay next is industrial activities like mining and extraction of minerals can lead to a mixture of harmful chemicals in the soil and decay its quality very important industrial activities like mining and extraction of minerals can lead to a mixture of harmful chemicals definitely we all know that nowadays that industry that are running they release harmful chemicals and that harmful chemicals are very very toxic as compared to soil or for as compared to for the soil why because they add harmful chemicals in the soil and once harmful chemicals are added into the soil then they affect the biodiversity of the soil okay now this diagram shows you the soil pollution you can see different types of effects or you different types of causes starting from the right hand side herbicide pesticide fungicide these are all the agricultural practices that are done so this is known as agriculture pollution okay then if we can say that domestic pollution what is the what is what how does it lead to the soil pollution because of the household waste industrial waste and authorized landfill sites okay and the next one is industrial pollution that is due to non biodegradable pollutants because industries release harmful chemical substances into the soil okay this we discussed it in the water also sometimes they release this harmful substance in the water also clear so this was about the causes of soil pollution okay so in the next video we will be uh, discussing the effects of soil pollution okay till then student you keep studying and stay inside our house okay thank you